Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer True Fans Killer Toy Reviews and have I got an exciting review for you today. It's this, the Blue Rhino Studio Tyrannosaurus Rex Fleshy. This beautiful piece was first unveiled in summer of 2020 at the Field Museum, the home of the most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever discovered. FMNHPR 2081, or more commonly known as Sue, is easy easily the most famous specimen of the Tyrant Lizard King the world over, so it's only fitting that a proper model reflecting our latest understandings of Tyrannosaurus Rex should be made in its image. Fleshy, as Blue Rhino Studio so affectionately calls it, was probably the best thing to come out of last year, and as such it's been something I've looked forward to reviewing for a long time now. So let's get right into it, starting as we always do, with the head. So taking a look at the head of this thing, you can see that Blue Rhino Studio absolutely nailed it. There's no other way to put it. This is a T-Rex head through and through. You can see you've got the larger armor scales covering the tip of the snout, complete with some awesome scarification, which is an amazing detail if you ask me. I'm sure Sue partook in some face biting back in its day and was also on the receiving end of some nasty chomps, so it's nice to see that reflected in the sculpt here. Those same armored scales also form the extra oral tissue on this particular model, protecting the teeth within. Now lips are certainly a hot debate at the moment, and I think there are some compelling arguments to be made on both sides. That being said, without solid proof one way or the other, the inclusion or omission of extra oral tissue on a theropod model is neither correct or incorrect, and it really just comes down to what the artist feels is right. Blue Rhino Studio have opted for the extra oral tissue approach with this piece, and I gotta say, I think it's probably the most effective execution of that idea I have ever seen on a piece of paleo art, be it 2D or 3D. Something that I appreciate is that you can still see the chompers in there, they're not buried in the gums or completely hidden by the lips, and the attention to detail on them is quite lovely. The color is nice and the blood is a great and super realistic touch. I absolutely love the fleshy cheeks under the jugals there, that is just pitch perfect work in regards to both texture and paint. And the gloss really gives it a slobbery look, which I love. You may have noticed by now that Fleshy has a hold of something. It's a young Edmontosaurus, which looks just as gorgeous as the T-Rex itself. I always love when the sort of little additions a model gets look just as good as the model in question. And we all know one of the inherent problems of a theropod model is balance, especially on one as front-heavy and forward-leaning as this, and each company has their own unique method of dealing with this. For PNSO, it's a plastic stand. For Vitae, we get a base. Safari LTD is starting to produce their models in a more rigid plastic as a means to prevent warping, and Papo? Well, Papo certainly dances to a unique beat. But what Blue Rhino Studio have done here is actually pretty ingenious. They've made the tail of the Edmontosaurus prey a third point of contact to ensure that Fleshy doesn't fall forward, which is a great idea if you ask me. The sculptural details on the Edmontosaurus are just as fantastic as the T-Rex, with lovely folds of skin and beautiful scale detail across the board. I'm also delighted to see the recent discovery of the hoof-like nail on the front legs reflected in this sculpture as well. The bite wounds are beautifully painted and the gore looks super realistic, all of which lends this unfortunate Edmontosaurus a super lifelike appearance even in death. But back to Fleshy itself, as you move up the snout you can see these sort of cornified nasal ridges and keratin hornlets above those striking eyes. I absolutely love the color they went with. And if you look at this thing head on you can see that T-Rex's binocular gaze has been captured in this sculpture. There's a real life and personality to this piece and honestly I think it looks adorable. I don't care that I'd be a hamburger to this thing, it's freaking cute man. I don't know what it is but it just reminds reminds me of a dog holding its favorite chew toy in its mouth while looking expectantly to you as it invites you to play. It's adorable, and the fact that it is such a cute look on a 40 foot predator makes me love it even more. Moving down the body just past the skull you can see the ears have been sculpted in and there are some lovely folds of skin around the throat as fleshy cranes its head ever so slightly down and to the left and the way the flesh just sort of hangs over the pectorals and shoulder blade is great. 
great. And you know what else is great? This T-Rex is just really, really fat. I love it. I freaking love it. The Gastralia have been taken into account on this model, and it really gives this beast a gloriously rotund appearance. Moving down the tail, you can see that it is perfectly proportioned, with a graceful curve to it, and possesses some nice folds of skin. Something else worthy of note on this sculpture is the skin texture. At a distance, really all you notice are these striations across the body, if anything, but if you get in close, you can see those very small clusters of scales perfectly reflecting our understanding of Tyrannosaurus integument. We can argue all day about the lack of feathers, but given our latest understandings, I think this was the safe way to go, especially on this model. You're always just one ridiculous feather mohawk away from goofing up a perfectly good sculpt. The arms of the figure are appropriately short, but feature some nice musculature and detailing. I'm particularly fond of how the skin sags down around the bicep, making the arm appear as if it just sort of melts up into the torso. Honestly though, after PNSO's latest Wilson, I gotta say even these look a little long. <laughs> The legs on this Rex look incredibly beefy and powerful, and sport some beautiful areas of folding, sagging skin around the ankles and kneecaps. I mean, just look at those drumsticks. This is a powerful predator right here. One awesome detail is the inclusion of a massive scar on the left leg. Sue lived a rough life, suffering everything from broken ribs, torn tendons, arthritis, and even holes in the lower mandible. The left leg also showed some signs of damage in life, believed to have been caused by some sort of prey item that led to a deep infection. So it's really cool to see Blue Rhino Studio reflecting that pathology on the life model of the animal. Something else that is handled particularly well on this figure would be the feet. First off, the toe claws are amazing. These look so incredibly worn and lifelike. And then we get to the treatment of the backs of the toes with lovely plate scales interrupting the reticulous scale work. It's all just beautiful craftsmanship. And the way the skin is hanging down around the ankles really gives this thing a sense of weight. I couldn't get a proper look along the top or the underbelly of the figure, sorry, but lateral views of the model afford us some lovely views of wrinkles down around the gut and limbs of the animal. And you have got a subtle indication of the cloaca. It's nothing too extreme, which I'm fine with. I never like seeing dirty dino butts, so this works for me. As far as the pose goes, it's nothing too extravagant, just a slight stride forward as if Fleshy is lifting its prize from the ground before retreating to a safer feeding side, but honestly, it all works. I think the sort of refined work in regards to both the form and the fine details really gives this whole piece a sense of life. And honestly, I have a hard time believing this thing does not start moving around the second the room clears out, like some night at the museum level stuff. So yeah, the sculpt on this thing is simply awe-inspiring. Honestly, the paint is probably the weakest element of this piece. Don't get me wrong, it's very well applied, highlights the details perfectly, and looks incredibly lifelike. The lighting of the venue also might be doing it a bit of a disservice, but it's just a little on the dull side, mostly sandy beige and tawny coloration across the board. I guess they call it fleshy for a reason. Well, two reasons, I guess. It is really fat, after all. I mean, it's a sensible color scheme. It puts you in mind of lions or other such large, predators, but, you know, it's just not that interesting to look at. There are lovely washes that have been applied in the striations and amongst the scale work to make all of that detail pop, and it works to give this piece a sort of dirty, dusty look, which one would expect with an animal. I will say, I like the striping, especially on the tail, all of the colors used in those markings, as well as the sort of spattering of dark browns, really gives the model some naturalistic breakup and visual interest in regards to its color. I also think these markings are just very well applied and feel like they are part of the flesh rather than just being painted on top of it. That's something that's always important to me when it comes to creating a convincing paint job. As far as the size of this model goes, I don't have a tape measure long enough at my disposal, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Fleshy here comes in at around 42.5 feet long or 13 meters and stands in at just over 14 and three quarters feet tall at its highest point or roughly 4.5 meters off the ground. That puts this figure right around that one to one scale. For a size comparison, here it is with some people. And a fully grown wild man-child. 
Then, of course, got to bring in the recent PNSO Wilson, a super popular model that certainly rode the coattails of this beautiful figure by Blue Rhino Studios. Fleshy walked so that Wilson could run. Or wait, no, Fleshy just straight up ran and left everything else in the dust. Sorry, Wilson. <laughs> there's, there's no competition here. So there you have it, everyone. The Blue Rhino Studio Tyrannosaurus Rex statue fleshy based on the legendary Sue. I can't say it enough. This is an incredible work of art, and I mean that in every way. Keep your Davids, your Thinkers, your Pietas. This is the greatest sculptural achievement in the history of mankind, and I will die on this hill. From the extinction of the dinosaurs to the first human being to put a handprint on a cave wall and every generation of artists that followed, it's all just been a gradual build up to this. The pinnacle of human expression. It is the single best representation of Tyrannosaurus Rex in my eyes and I think it's going to be a long, long time before anyone else ever comes close to reaching this level of sheer awesomeness through art. With that in mind, this model easily earns the highest possible accolade my humble channel could give it. A Dynomite rating with 10 roaring seals of approval. I am bowing down and clapping for this thing. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Are you as in love with it as I am? What is your favorite work based off Tyrannosaurus Rex? And who do you want to see tackle the species next? Drop a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again next time. Until then, enjoy the rest of your April Fool's Day. And as always, take care out there. Kill Shrew Fan out.